It is true that politics right now is in an extraordinary flux. And I will venture to suggest that in 2020, the most important event internationally for South Africa is the US presidential election. And I am not Euro, uh, US centric. I tend to think, and I hope I am, more South African centric. But Donald Trump has taken the United States to a place that I never thought, particularly after two terms of Barack Obama, would be possible. Today, the, 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 the House Judiciary Committee under Jerry Nadler is starting its inquiry on the articles of impeachment. I won't talk about that, but I can take questions and answers. But I am of the belief that the American people ought to have their say. And it is an open question, and I was dead wrong in 16 about who was going to win that election. It's an open question whether or not Donald Trump can actually stitch together a coalition again and win, not with a majority of the votes, which is, of course, an abomination of democracy, but with the Electoral College. And that points to a fundamental deficit in the US constitutional history, which is that the underpopulated states, in order to get that constitutional bargain, um, were overweighted. And so he lost the 16 election, as you know, but won in the Electoral College. This calls into question the legitimacy of democracy in America, but it's also occurring, and this is where the South African dimension comes in, that, and I hope Lawton will speak to, in a moment on, on, on the Constitution here and its sustainability and viability. South Africa is in a moment of time where democracy, which I think is the key to handling things like climate change and the kind of multilateral cooperation that has to be consensus-based, will go. South Africa is feeling increasingly, I think, isolated. And I take as my, my authoritative source a cartoon that probably several of you saw in the Mail Guardian a few weeks ago, which had Cyril Ram President Ramaphosa at in, in Brazil for the BRICS summit. And he says, I, I, I think we, we've, we've lost touch with one another, or we're, we're, I just brought it with me here, I think we've grown apart. And what he's saying is that you've got ethnic nationalists, budding authoritarians in Brazil with Bolsonaro, uh, with uh, Vladimir Putin in, in Russia, with Xi Jinping in China, and with um, the ethnic nationalist Modi in India. Um, they're very different countries, but uh, they're not celebrating and advancing and sustaining democratic government. They are abusing power in their own ways. Donald Trump is a kind of wannabe in this department, but so is Great Britain. And just to put this in a little more in focus, I've just reviewed a, a new book by Eddie Maloka, and maybe many of you know Eddie, and it's on the foreign policy uh, uh, of, of South Africa uh, for the first 25 years. And he's encouraging public debate about these issues. But I find it kind of striking. The picture on the cover is of a South African flag, the most prominent. And it's flying in front of the Union buildings, which were built in 1910, as you know. But what are the flags around, the major powers that are partners with South Africa? Britain is problematic. That's one flag. US is problematic, that's another flag. Um, uh, China, uh, Kenya, India, and Russia. The only flag that is really run by, is, is democratic, um, is Angela Merkel's Germany. And Angela Merkel is a woman, but she's about to leave office. And so consequently, I'm thinking to myself, if the US were to reelect Donald Trump, not only would this be a constitutional crisis for America, it certainly would be. This is the most important election, as Barack Obama said, in his lifetime, and I'm 25 or 20 years older than he is, and it certainly is in my lifetime, and I can think back to Harry Truman. Therefore, I would like to think that you will follow this, but maybe even appeal, uh, and that the government would appeal through DERCO and through civil society to those forces in America that are trying their best to maintain constitutional governance.